Hello, my name is Abobo. I'm a physician and I live in the hub. I believe in helping people and charging them exorbitant amounts of money for basic health care. Roughly 60% of my patients have filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy and the other 40% are dead. It's hard being a doctor. No one seems to understand me when I say I need to amputate your skull. But that won't stop me, because I have a degree from the hub's most prestigious medical college, and I'm ready to embark on a journey of capitalism and moral ambiguity in order to create my own medical practice. I plan to use my training to generate 100,000 USD, which in hub currency is approximately $34 million. It's going to be difficult, because I cheated on all of my tests, and my medical stat is negative 100. This causes my first aid to initiate massive blood loss in my patients. However, through sheer willpower and extreme levels of implied consent, I believe I can achieve my dreams. But first, a word from our sponsor. GamerSups is a company which sells some very tasty energy supplements. Sometimes I eat an entire can of it and run around my apartment punching holes in the drywall. But this isn't about me, it's about you. Because I've advertised for GamerSups before and, uh, I don't know how to say this, but I can see everything you've been buying. Which means I know you have an unhealthy obsession with Rain Ho and the taste of anime girl thighs. Look, I feel like I've walked in on something and it's a little awkward, so I'll leave. But before I go, use code REGGIE for 10% off on future purchases. Now back to the video. Here I am, Dr. Obobo MD. As with any recent university graduate, I am impoverished, malnourished, and prone to bludgeoning people to death with a copper pipe. But it's okay, because I can fix all of that once I have my own medical practice. I'm thinking about setting up shop in the Holy Nation, because I'm one and it should provide me some degree of safety from the single greatest threat to privatized healthcare. Yes, of course, I'm talking about socialists, roving bands of socialists. They're out there, and they're actively trying to hunt me down. The only thing stopping them is that much like a man who drinks mouthwash and pisses himself, I do not have a fixed address. But once I make my office, I will, and the socialists will almost definitely launch a violent protest on my ability to be alive. But I shouldn't get ahead of myself, because first, I need to do some fundraising to be able to afford my medical supplies. This was actually very easy once I rationalized committing grand larceny. These people have so many things they simply don't need. Look at this idiot. I just stole 40 pounds of your personal belongings and you don't even care. Their opulence knows no limits, so I felt entirely justified spending four days and nights committing petty crimes to generate money. After several visits to the pawn shop, I had a few thousand dollars to my name, which I spent on building materials, medicine, and disgusting food. But before I could set out into the dangerous world, I had to train my athletics. For the sake of brevity, I've condensed this 30 minute process into approximately 2 seconds, which looks like this. <laughs> Thank you, Abobo. That was very compelling. My travel to Blister Hill was going well. In fact, I even found my first patient unconscious and on the side of the road. He was losing blood from a laceration on his arm. He's quite lucky I found him when I did, because otherwise, he might have survived. But once Dr. Abobo gets his hands on you, it's all over. Because the first step of my healing process involves taking inventory of your blood by removing all of it from your body and spreading it out on the floor next to you. I've never actually needed to develop a step after that for fairly obvious reasons. Anyway, we did our best to heal this man, but unfortunately his condition was terminal and he passed away. A tragedy, but also a paycheck. Because medical services are not free and death is no excuse for avoiding your debts. So I liberally invited myself into the man's inventory to find some petty cash which I then used to pay myself, thereby stimulating the economy. And just like that, we're already making the world a better place. After a little more traveling, I arrived in Okran's Pride. It's the ideal location for my practice because there are plenty of farmers that will hopefully need medical services for their grotesque and unwashed bodies. After a bit of construction, the offices of Dr. Abobo MD are officially open. It's quite modest. In fact, I decided to save on space by putting the operating table in the waiting room. That way people can watch. It's kind of like Subway. Apart from that, we have a research area for the development of new medical procedures and finally some very impressive signage. Unfortunately, our advertising isn't attracting anyone, so it looks like we'll have to do some house calls. I began prowling the streets in search of potential clients. It wasn't actually too difficult because I figured out I could just follow the Holy Nation guards and heal all of the emaciated drug addicts that they pulverized. There are two downsides to this method. First, IV drug users are known for many things, but having money is not one of them. I confirmed this 
stereotype after billing five different patients and making about $63. Considering I had to use bandages in the process, I'm probably just barely breaking even. However, the second and more concerning downside was that the guards had a tendency to wander off, thus leaving me alone to be accosted by violent predators. The prospect of being eaten alive is upsetting enough, but even just a single injury could be the end of me since I am physically incapable of bandaging my own wounds. This was a lesson I learned the hard way when, after escaping a fight with a bone dog, I absentmindedly started healing myself, only for blood to immediately begin shooting out of my eyes like a pressure washer. Fortunately, I managed to stop myself before losing consciousness, but still injured and bleeding heavily, I was in danger. As a medical professional, I'm sure I could fix this problem myself, but I don't want to, because I think it's a conflict of interest. Yes, exactly. So instead, I'm going to attempt to crawl my way to the closest town and pass out in the street, where hopefully a guard will take pity on me and administer first aid. Luckily, that's exactly what happened, and after sleeping off his blood loss, Dr. Abobo was back in business. Now that was a very close call, and it has made me reevaluate my approach to medicine. It's not safe to treat people in the field like this, because at any moment I could be sold into slavery. This is why hospitals were invented. So from here, I'm going to also assume the identity of an ambulance by relocating my patients to my office for further treatment. I began the process of scouring the wastes for anyone with even the slightest injury. If they were awake and it seemed safe, I would patch them up quickly, but for everyone else, I dragged their unconscious bodies into my waiting room and piled them up in a dark corner. I was hoping they would just wake up and sit in the chairs until I was ready to see them, but instead, they seemed to prefer running out of the building screaming at the top of their lungs. Locking the door helped, but it was still a strange interaction and generally in effective to my needs, because I would then have to subdue them through the use of violence. So recently, I've had to morally justify using cages to increase my patient retention rate. I think it's better for everyone this way. Things were going well. I wasn't making a lot of money, but we were profitable. Occasionally, I'd even find some Holy Nation soldiers who were willing to pay me more money for my medical services. Thanks to all of our hard work, we were even visited by some kind of regulatory body. They're pencil pushers, and I don't respect them. But sometimes you have to pretend to care about the world coming out of someone's mouth just to get them to leave you alone. So I talked with them, reaffirmed my Hippocratic Oath, and then returned to my gross negligence. The only issue was that the socialists caught wind of my medical practice, and they began sending me plenty of protesters. It wasn't too bad, usually they'd just break into the office, find a bunch of bloody people in cages, stand around for a few hours, and then leave, but it was interrupting my work, and this cannot stand. By this point, I had managed to scrape together around $15,000, and I decided it might be a worthwhile investment to hire some security guards. Now everyone knows the best employees are alcoholics because their lives are spiraling out of control so rapidly that they can't afford not to work for you. Given this universal truth, I went to the nearest bar, found a group of men filleting a bottle of hand sanitizer, and instantly trusted them with my life. Between food, medicine, and my new bodyguards, I had a lot of expenses, but I could at least continue my work unimpeded. The best part though was that when the socialists eventually came back, my bodyguards beat them within an inch of their lives which allowed me to heal them all 15 of them. It was during this healing festival that I realized Dr. Abobo doesn't just bleed his patients out, he actually identifies whatever injury they have and then proceeds to make it 100 times worse. For example, this man had an injury to his chest, so Dr. Abobo clasped his hands together in a ball and pounded on the man's chest until he stopped breathing. And this man's leg was sore, so Dr. Abobo harvested his limb. I have to say, watching him systematically disassemble these poor bastards was truly a sight to behold and it was a massive payday. Day. But most importantly, I considered it a substantial moral victory for privatized healthcare. In fact, this gave me an idea. Historically, there are accounts of construction workers burning down bridges so they could then be hired to rebuild them. It's a good way to generate business, and I think I can do the same thing, but with healthcare. I could use my guards to inflict bodily harm on random civilians, and once they were unconscious, I could proceed to exsanguinate them much like a chupacabra. I tried this out on a few groups of people, and it worked pretty good. I want to remind everyone that what you're seeing here is is morally correct, because the average person is already sick, they just don't know it yet. So by breaking their knees, we're just fast-tracking them into the healthcare system so they can get the help they really need. Now this method was good, but I knew there was a way to give the people more healthcare and faster. When you build a base just outside of Stack, there's a chance for hive traders to come visit you, and sometimes they will attempt to path through the city rather than avoiding it. This results in a 50-person bloodbath, or as I like to call it, a business opportunity. I managed to replicate the 
this scenario after about two weeks of waiting. The Hiver showed up at the north gate of Stack and all hell broke loose. Violence spread through the city like a deadly virus, but luckily, the doctor is in. Interestingly, this event seems to have also incited a violent rebellion from the city's mercenary demographic, because every mercenary in town began attacking the guards at the same time. I don't actually have an explanation for this, but I think I'm going to need more bandages. I wasn't hostile to either party, so I just casually made my way through the battlefield, healing as many people as possible and making thousands of dollars in the process. It was a truly beautiful expression of privatized healthcare. And executing these little schemes made me feel as though Abobo was really coming into his own, as some kind of psychopath who would stop at nothing to give you medical services, whether you want them or not. Anyway, this healthcare renaissance really revitalized my career, and I could now afford to buy the professional med kits rather than bandaging my patients with used toilet paper. Dr. Abobo was doing so well, I even decided to hire an intern for him. His name was Carl. Carl wasn't a skilled doctor like Abobo, but he was helpful in running errands and carrying bodies. He also enabled us to complete more elaborate forms of healthcare fraud. For example, I took our group to Vane where my security team beat up a gorilla. Carl then used his layman's understanding of medicine to heal the gorilla and carry it to a crowded bar where he then released it. At which point the gorilla woke up and started wildly flailing its arms and knocking people out left and right. Much like a superhero, Dr. Abobo sprang into action to begin healing everyone in the bar. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but I managed to maintain my 100% mortality rate. I have to say, at first, having negative 100 first aid feels like a weakness, but once you realize it's basically a blank check for sanctioned violence, it becomes very powerful. Now up to this point, we've just been administering medical treatment in return for pocket change, but if we could offer additional services, then we could justify taking more from our clients, such as their clothing and wedding rings, which we could then pawn for extra cash. But what other amenities could we possibly offer to our dearly departed patients? Well, I think it's obvious corpse disposal. By becoming a two-in-one doctor's office crematorium, we can heal our patients, and then, if, for whatever reason, they don't survive, we can destroy the evidence. I mean, respectfully cremate the evidence. With our furnaces running 24-7, this additional income stream proved very lucrative. In fact, I've determined the Holy Nation soldiers to be some of my best patients. They're able to pay between $350 to $2,000 for medical treatment, and then by pawning their entire inventory, we can generate anywhere from $500 to $3,500 to pay for the cremation services for a maximum possible payday of $5,500 per person. It's not bad. But goddamn, there must be a way to make more money with even less effort, and that's when it hit me. This whole time, I've been wasting my medical knowledge healing the poor. It's no wonder we're still broke. Dr. Abobo needs to offer his services to the rich and famous, and in the Holy Nation, that narrows it down to exactly one person, Lord Phoenix. If a soldier has $5,000, then Phoenix must have hundreds of thousands, which I'm sure he would be happy to pay us. Now, healing him is the easy part. Injuring him, not so much, because he is surrounded by dozens of highly trained guards. So we have to devise some elaborate plan to injure Lord Phoenix so that a Bobo can then heal him to death. How will we accomplish this monumental task? This is how. I wouldn't blame you for mistaking this as a beak thing, but in reality, it's far, far worse. This is a pickaxe thing. Faster, stronger, and with approximately 10 times more damage. It's a force to be reckoned with, and you may be wondering how I acquired one. Quite simple, really. I went to Vane, got its attention, and then led it into a group of 75 hivers. It killed all of them. So then I brought it to the next town, where it killed almost all of them, before before succumbing to blood loss. Carl patched it up and now we have it resting precariously on his shoulder. We're going to go into Phoenix's throne room, gently place this at his feet, and then see what happens. Fortunately, smuggling exotic animals into Blister Hill is very easy because the security there is pretty much concerned with only one thing. It's the moment of truth. We lay the beast down, hide behind a thin wall, and wait. Luckily, we didn't have to wait long because within seconds of waking up, the creature began cleaving men in half by the dozens. Each swing of its big dumb head splashed down for 12 damage. I think I may have doomed these people. However, I didn't have time to think about that because the pickaxe thing just blasted Phoenix in the face for a thousand damage and he wasn't looking so good. Abobo jumped into action to heal Phoenix while body parts were flying across the room and ricocheting off the walls at mock speed. After approximately three seconds of working on my patient, I had to face reality. I'm sorry Phoenix, I really tried, but the damage was too severe. And I regret to inform you, but 100% blood withdrawal treatment is not covered by your insurance. 
sense, so I'm just going to have to bill you for $200,000. Fair trade. And with that, Dr. Robobo MD has accomplished his quest. He's a successful and respected doctor that definitely doesn't engage in medical malpractice or insurance fraud. We've met our original goal of $100,000, and what did we spend it on? Well, I spent the first $20,000 installing this giant vat of goo in the waiting room. Apparently, if you climb inside, it will actually heal you. I haven't tried it myself because I'm pretty sure it gives you cancer. I was going to spend the rest of my money actually improving my medical practice, but then I came to my senses. Why should I spend $80,000 to become a better physician when I could instead spend $30,000 hiring criminals to go kill all of the other doctors, which would relatively speaking make me a better doctor? Now you may be thinking, Reggie, you're off your meds. There are no other doctors in Kenshi, but there are. In fact, there's a whole colony of them. Countless physicians selling medical supplies, healing people, and worst of all, training new doctors. It's competition, and I won't stand for it. In fact, I want to tell you a story to make you understand where I'm coming from. It's about the greatest white kung fu man who ever lived, Count Dante. He's a controversial figure, and a lot of people will try to tell you he's a fraud, or a hack, or even insane. Anyway, he understood the value of a monopoly because he ran a martial arts school and when a nearby dojo opened up and started stealing his business, he decided to take matters into his own hands. He was a martial artist, so you may imagine he was planning to beat these guys up. Well, you would be wrong, because instead he impersonated a police officer, snuck into the enemy dojo, and then produced several sticks of dynamite and attempted to explode the building during business hours. I learned about this six years ago and since then I've been trying to channel that exact brand of psychosis into everything I do. So when I ask, am I justified in systematically destroying the medical guild, Count Dante says yes. So let's go. I spent roughly $50,000 rounding up a posse. Dr. Abobo and Carl are conscientious objectors, so they won't be participating in the fight, but I can't say the same for these lawless maniacs. We traveled to the medical guild and they let us in without any trouble. There are four targets we're looking for in specific. Dr. Chopper, Dr. Joy, Dr. Floppy, and their leader, Dr. Amelia. If we can take them down, the guild will dissolve and we will have achieved complete health care monopoly over the entire world. I started the fight and it was instant mayhem. As it turns out, the medical university had their own security team, which was fairly dangerous, but we quickly outnumbered them and before long the raging battle had petered out to dozens of mercenaries circle beating helpless physicians. The doctors had single digit combat stats, so by that point, it was all over. I surveyed the battlefield and found all of our targets. They're barely clinging on to life, and I won't lie, there is a dark and twisted temptation telling me to simply let them die. But you Years ago, Abobo swore a sacred oath, the Hippocratic Oath, and I have a moral obligation to heal these people. So I got to work, and like Dr. Abobo always says, results are guaranteed, just not good results. Sadly, while I was bloodletting my patients, I realized Carl had been attacked by a security guard. They got you real bad, Carl. In one final twist of the poetic dagger, my only friend Carl was now bleeding out in the middle of a medical school, with everyone who could have helped him now dead. I know I'm supposed to heal him, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So instead, I dropped him off a cliff. It's better this way. Very unfortunate about young Carl, but with six figures to his name, a successful medical practice, and no competition, it's safe to say Dr. Abobo is living the American dream, and his purpose in life is complete. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you to this month's patrons for supporting the channel, and finally, thank you for watching.